This presentation is part of a lecture series on multi-resolution signal and geometry processing by Michael Adams at the University of Victoria in Victoria, Canada. For those of you who might be interested, a copy of the slides for this lecture series, as well as the corresponding textbook, can be downloaded from the website whose URL is given on this slide, in particular this URL here. In this part of the lecture slides, we're going to look at the Computational Geometry Algorithms Library, better known as SIGAL. The Computational Geometry Algorithms Library, better known as SIGAL, is a very powerful open source C++ library for geometric computation. It's used by many commercial organizations as well as many open source projects. It's very well documented software, it has a very extensive manual. The last time I checked it was more than 4,000 pages and it's probably grown much beyond that by now. And it provides data types for representing many, many different types of geometric objects. It includes things like points, lines, planes, and polygons, Voronoi diagrams, 2D, 3D, and n-dimensional triangulations, uh, polygon meshes, kinetic data structures, and many other types of uh, geometric types as well. And in addition to providing representations for these types, it also provides many different algorithms for manipulating these data types. The code is available for both Microsoft Windows and Unix platforms. It's quite portable. It works on a lot of different uh, platforms with C++ compilers. Some Linux distributions already have packages for Seagal. For example, if you happen to use Fedora Linux, the packages Seagal, Seagal Devel, Seagal Demo Source contain, at least at the time of this uh, presentation, contain the Seagal uh, software. The website for the Seagal project is given on the, is in this URL here. There's a lot of very useful resources, documentation, etc., that are available through this website, as well as the actual software itself you can download. And a link to the online manual, the latest version, is given by this URL here. Uh, this is a very useful resource for looking up various different uh, functionality in the library, because it's quite extensive, again. so. It's sometimes a bit of a challenge to find things in the manual. Amongst the many things for which Seagal provides support, it provides support for polygon meshes. You can read and write polygon mesh data in various common formats, including the OFF format or object file format. It has built-in support for several subdivision schemes, including loop subdivision, Catmull-Clark subdivision, Duce-Sabin subdivision, and a few others. And by using Seagull, we can greatly simplify the amount of uh, effort that's required to implement subdivision surface algorithms and wavelet transforms and other algorithms for polygon meshes. Uh, in the Seagull manual, the most relevant material that pertains to what we're interested in here, which is primarily subdivision surface related functionality, are the 2D and 3D linear geometry kernels. The kernels are sort of the core part of Seagull. It's, it's very difficult to do much of anything with Seagull without using the geometry kernels. Uh, 3D polyhedral surface functionality, this is basically the polygon mesh functionality in Seagal, and 3D surface subdivision methods, which are the subdivision, subdivision algorithms. At this point, I need to introduce some basic terminology that's used by Seagal. In particular, I need to introduce the notion of a handle. A handle is simply an object that's used to reference an element stored in some data structure. Um, the, the object, the handle object, can be dereferenced in order to obtain access to the element to which it refers. Uh, so for a data structure that stores elements of type T, a handle type might correspond to just a simple pointer type, pointer to T, or it could be some user-defined type that behaves like a pointer, in other words, some kind of smart pointer type. So some examples of handle types, uh, for example, when dealing with polygon meshes in the Seagal library, vertices, facets, and half edges that are parts of the polygon mesh are referred to by handles or handle types. In programming, we often have to deal with linear sequences of elements. And a linear sequence has the property that it has a well-defined first and last element. So for example, if you have a linear sequence, we can meaningfully talk about the first element, which in this case would be the element A, and the last element, which would be the element F. However, this is not the only type of sequence that we can have. Another type of sequence which occurs very commonly, especially in geometric algorithms or geometric data structures, is what we call a circular sequence. 
And as the name suggests, in a circular sequence, elements are arranged in, in sort of a circular pattern like what's shown here. And when things are arranged in this way, the elements of the sequence are arranged in this way, it's not meaningful to talk about a first and last element in the sequence. Because if I ask you what's the first or last element in this circular sequence, it's not clear which is the first and which is the last, because the sequence doesn't really have any beginning and any end. It just loops around forever. So one sort of programming uh, paradigm that's very frequently used when we're using container classes in C++ is the notion of an iterator. Iterators work very well with linear sequences because you can have a begin iterator which refers to the first element and then an end iterator which refers to one past the last element in the sequence. However, if you have a circular sequence, iterators don't really make so much sense here because there is no begin, there is no end. So how would you define the semantics of a a function which returns a begin iterator and a function that returns an end iterator. It doesn't really make sense. So this leads to the notion of what's called a circulator in Seagal, which I'm going to discuss next. As mentioned previously, iterators are very useful when working with linear sequences of elements. In other words, sequences with a well-defined first element and last element. Often in geometric algorithms, however, circular sequences of elements very naturally arise. And iterators don't fit very well with circular sequences of elements because of the fact that a circular sequence has no well-defined first element and no well-defined last element. So for this reason, Seagal introduces the notion of what's called a circulator. And a circulator is an object that allows iteration over elements in a circular sequence of elements. So a circulator is basically the equivalent to an iterator, but it's designed to be used with circular sequences. So it fits much better with circular sequences than an iterator would. So some examples of circular, circulator types in Seagal is a type to allow iteration over all of the half edges that are incident on a particular vertex in a polygon mesh, or the type to allow iteration over all half edges that are incident on a particular face in a polygon mesh. So essentially you can iterate around all of the edges, for example, that are incident on a vertex, or all of the faces that are incident on a vertex, for example. Circulators come in both constant mutable forms, just like iterators. There's const iterators, which can't be used to modify the object to which they refer. And then non-const iterators, sometimes called mutable iterators, which are allowed to modify the thing that they refer to. We have a similar notion with circulators. We have constant mutable forms. And the mutable circulator can be used to modify the element that it references, while a const circulator cannot. And in order to write const correct code, you have to be careful to use mutable circulators where you need them and const uh, circulators where you need them.